So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's Motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Welcome back to another instalment of the Silent Night Remake 2012 NPCs, a sub-series of the podcast under this where we take the movie Silent Night from 2012, a remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night, <laughs> and name only, and then we break it up into five-minute reviewable segments. I get people from all over the world to join me and discuss those five minutes, and guess what? The kicker is I mix up the order of the release, so this ain't linear. So this might be the first one you're listening to, it might be the last one, could be somewhere in between. On this episode, we're discussing minutes 25 through 30 in June. Joining me to discuss these incredible five minutes of cinema is my good buddy Jeff Lawn. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing good. Uh, way to sell, way to sell it, saying it was an incredible five minutes. Uh, I'll praise <laughs> you for that. I'll praise you for that. One man's meat is another man's poison. Um, <laughs> one man's trash is another man's treasure. I don't know. There's plenty of sayings that basically say that if you didn't like this, chances are someone does. Um, there's someone <laughs> out there to whom this is their favourite holiday movie ever, by holiday horror, which, I mean, is baffling to me, but there's someone out there that is, like, right now having an online argument with some other random faceless person on the internet telling them why they are wrong on Silent Night 2012. So. Yeah, it's me on my burner account. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know about this, but I have a substack dedicated purely to the greatness of Silent Night from 2012, Duncan. Um... <laughs> Like, this one is bookended with the... Uh, actually, what's funny about this is you got two back-to-back five minutes. Right, so this yeah. is technically bookended by the other episode, which may have dropped or may, may drop out of context and after this. Uh, but this one has the deputy walking up the stairs. Uh, it will conclude with uh, Goldie, um, uh, assistant to a glamour photographer... Um, I say glamour photographer apparently also a porn director um, yeah. like she she's talking to one of the actresses and saying yeah have a great one babe and that's where the scene ends um, <laughs> we've got to we've got to get into this one uh, and we've got to like take a couple of seconds to appreciate that Malcolm McDowell is an incredible actor right really, really oh, yeah. is Ooh. really is I mean the laundry list of movies that this guy's been in are just like up there and um, he decided at some point that he was going to do the Loomis character for Rob Zombie, right? And I think he did a good job in it. I'll be honest, I actually prefer Halloween 2 Loomis to Halloween 1 because at least he tries to make the role his own. Yeah. And in the first one, I think he's trying to be too much Pleasance, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Me and uh, my buddy on our our podcast, we covered it, I think, this year. for Mm -hmm. We did both Rob Zombie ones, and we did actually mention how we do enjoy that he kind of is just kind of a 
asshole in it. Well, <laughs> he's because... not, he doesn't randomly show up and he's yeah. like, I gotta kill Michael. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna make money on this and that's just kind of what I'm gonna do. So. And that's kind of what a Loomis would be like now. That's kind of Wait, why I love like, it. He's like Malcolm McDowell. Okay, so he just transitioned into this. He stayed in <laughs> Loomis' character to be his actual self because he's like, I'm gonna make money on this movie. I'm not gonna care, but I'm gonna make the money. So yeah, give, give me, show me the money. Um, and this is kind of, this is kind of like he's, he's in this way. Like, but after that, I think just everyone was like, "Oh, Malcolm McDowell does horror movies now. <laughs> like, we, we need to snap him up." And as a result, he's in these series of less than stellar um, horror movies. Um, yeah. But just weird and kind of sad because last year he did that horror movie that Argento produced, which was really, really, really good. And his performance in it was excellent. Um, the one about the witch had Alice Krieg in it. Uh, I forgot the name of it. It's yeah. fucking gone. It's gone, it's gone, it's gone. Set in Scotland as well. And it was really, really good. Um, although in that movie he is playing a kind of famous director who may have sexually abused Alice Craig when she was younger um, but that's a story for a different podcast anyway <laughs> um, so this one kicks off the deputy turns around, she's walking up the stairs she's already just called in the dead body of Deputy Jordan um, and she continues her search upstairs and boy are we padding time with this search <laughs> like, 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 we, there's, a, there's a whole lot of actual police searching happening here where I'm like that we could we could shorten this down um, she goes upstairs she goes into the kitchen she walks around out of the kitchen into the hallway and we get to see all this pretty much in real time yeah, she walks into different rooms going oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh that room startled me it had a door <laughs> she uh the best way to describe this is meanders because it couldn't be any slower <laughs> up the set of stairs and um, as she reaches the landing she begins to start looking around the room meanwhile there's a phone ringing which yeah. to me would be instantly the thing where I'd be like where's that ringing coming from no 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 um, not deputy uh, Braderwood or Briarwood or Briar Brader Briderwood I don't know what's name is like it's, it's mentioned like about 20 times in this movie and I just refer to it as deputy Um she sees a what can only be described as blood-soaked mattress. Like all I'm saying about this mattress is Julia from fucking Hellraiser Two should be coming out this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, or just any of the motels in my hometown. Um, <laughs> I don't understand why they all look like that. <laughs> What's happened here? What do you mean it's red wine? It clearly isn't. Um, so yeah, like she walks over and finds a bloody mattress. She hears a ringing phone. It leads her to a chest of drawers which she opens once again giving a (gasps) (laughs) (laughs) like which has a severed hand holding a mobile phone I'm not entirely sure why the killer put the hand holding the phone in there and I'm also unsure did she die holding the phone or has she done this as like an interesting set piece (laughs) did the like rigor mortis set in where the hand was like gripping that phone already I'm not I don't I'm know what's going sure. on here. Like, also, like, if we if she's went missing, the husband's put a report in here. He's obviously tried phoning this phone a few times. The police can just track that phone. This is 2012. We could do that then. Uh, yeah, know? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I have no fucking clue what's going on here. Anyway, anyway. Um, that was the only, and like the whole scene with the drawer, that's, yep. yes, that's a good reason to be startled. Not like hearing a <laughs> creak on the stairs or walking up. I mean, she has a gun out. She's, it's not like she was, you know, alone, like, scared she had well she was alone scared but she, you know she had enough to protect herself at least but you know think she, she has a gun right and yeah granted this movie keeps telling us all the way through it until she actually kills a man in this movie that she doesn't have the guts to pull the trigger as yeah. if that's a bad thing like like oh, oh look at the cop that can't kill someone i'm like that's oh, no, refreshing. She, has some, she has some humanity in her she's <laughs> like, not just a shell like killer <laughs> Oh, geez. Look at this cut cop. Uh, just walking about the place, not shooting people. Doesn't but, McDowell call her out on it? Like, oh, like all the way through this movie. movie. In this scene, he calls her out, but he calls her out about like 20 times. Like, just dresses <laughs> her down right to her face. Even though it's later revealed in this movie that her father murdered a Santa, right, with a flamethrower. But, like, we, we don't fucking care about that. Like, we don't, we don't give a shit about that. Like, McDowell is just brutal in this movie and the best part. Like, everything he says is just dripping in sass. 
and it makes he is the best it. actor that we've ever had and we're just not giving him enough credit he's just so he's so brutal it's fucking great um but anyway like that like she reveals this hand holding a phone doesn't check to see who the caller is just closes no. the drawer is it like nothing to see here like <laughs> i did not Ooh, see scary that. hand shut the drawer Ew. um and of course she turns around and that's when she sees a fucking severed torso yeah <laughs> you see that yeah. you, you're you're being very blasé with your yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah she definitely Probably does <laughs> well what is it it's like stacked on a tv or something is it's that what on, that a, was? It's on like a like a tv unit but the tv is missing from the unit and in place of where the tv would be is the severed head minus the eyes right yeah yeah i know i mean those you gotta keep those for later so i understand why they're gone <laughs> she's like she is totally startled by this and then once again huh, and then turns around <laughs> and the sheriff's there and she's like oh and she's just like all the time she's holding a gun and right uh, but, but, but Dale's like Bradamore. Jesus, <laughs> stand down, Jesus. Do you want to go home? Because his accent just keeps changing and it's fucking amazing. And she's like, no. And he's like, you're shaking. And she says, shiver and it's, it, it's cold. And he's like, you should have waited me to come. And she's, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And she's like, um, I had to make sure that, you know, she was okay. And this is the first dressing down by Malcolm Adele. He's like, look. I'm gonna say this for your own good. You're not equipped to handle this kind of situation. I mean, we both know that. So don't go <laughs> playing the hero. That's my job. And I'm like, like, why is he so angry? <laughs> like, is he fucking, yeah, I mean, he's down that happened. deputy already. There's one dead in the basement. This other one's just trying to help, and he's just like fucking shredding up his threads. Yeah, I mean. Obviously, they're shorthanded, so he's going to need all the help they could get. Why is he being so rude? And if she's so bad at her job, why is she still doing it? And why, why, why hasn't he fired her? Or said maybe find a new line of work or maybe go the realest thing in this movie anything. is the incompetence of the police department and its inability to fire people that are not capable of doing the job. <laughs> Maybe it's ahead of its time, man. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say not like that happens today at all. Anyway. Never, we never have. And then we get. What in the what in the, this makes me fucking laugh every single time because you just change the word to a word that Malcolm McDowell can pronounce in not an English accent. And he's like, <laughs> Oh Jesus, what a bloody mess. <laughs> <laughs> and I about pee myself laughing. Because it's just It's pretty great. It's just not consistent. And the director clearly isn't prepared to say cut because McDowell might just walk off the set <laughs> yeah so, cut. no it was definitely like um improvised and he's like got it perfect this yep. is this is perfect. this American is apple pie let me let me say this and then he walks across and there's some bloody footprints on the floor and he goes whoa a big fella <laughs> <laughs> So he becomes, that is, becomes Steve that is Irwin. The best part, yeah. He becomes Steve Irwin. <laughs> the crocodile had a look at this big fella. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 Maybe it was funded from all these different countries and they're like, we have to have a character representing that. And McDowell was just like, Well, I could do it all. And they're like, No, well, you can't play multiple characters. He's like, like who can I'm not? Did, did you did you not see me? And like Clockwork Orange, did you not see me? Have you seen my range? Have you seen my range? I I can do anything I want, and watch me prove it to you. Um, so (laughs) the coroner (laughs) arrives and is taking the bodies out. The deputy and McDowell are in the kitchen. McDowell says (laughs) once again, "This is oh, they bring back the word bloody again, and it's uh, this is fucking genius." Says, "See." I guess this is what happens when you try and start a new life. I told him she was bad news. I mean, fuck. She was scoring half the bloody town. Well, this, <laughs> it just fucking changes again. Oh. Oh, so yeah, apparently like McDowell took Deputy Jordan aside and it was like that. Anyone but this woman here because this woman here, she is sleeping with everyone. And you know what that means? You will die by electrocution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> marauding killer Santa will one day capture you, tie a, 
tie Christmas tree lights around you and crank things up till your eyeballs explode. So don't sleep with her, is what I'm saying, and also wear a condom if you do. Um, you know what I mean? It's just so, so over the top. Um, and the deputy's like, where's the husband now? A la prime suspect in my eyes. And McDowell says, oh, waiting for the bars to open so he can get drunk. Yeah. Yeah, like, well, like, yeah, it's because it's Santa Con. Isn't everyone like the, the bars are packed? The whole town depends on Santa Con. Um, and the deputy's like, should we go and talk to him? And he's like, no, Giles did already. He was at the auto shop all day. The boss confirms it. No, he didn't do this. So I'm like, so he isn't the killer. Right, so we're removing him from this. Which is interesting because he's a faceless character. <laughs> I've not right. seen like you like you've just shown me torso and everything else. I want the police interrogation and this guy being grilled in a room and being like, "What's these chops from Seven? Oh, yeah. oh God! Oh God! Oh God! You're like just like hyperventilating as he sees pictures of the torso of his wife. That was her best feature, her torso. Um, can't believe they did that to her. <laughs> uh, you know, like, like something. Well, it looks better without arms. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys going to do with that? Can I take it home? <laughs> <laughs> do you think she died peacefully? Um... <laughs> I think Christmas story would sue me if I made a lamp out of it. Is it yeah. too close to the leg? Is it too... <laughs> oh, fuck. We're going to hell. Um, <laughs> and... Um... <laughs> so basically, uh, she's like, no, he didn't do this. And the deputy's like, well, then who did? Which is the question every police officer should be asking. But also, I love that she's just thrown that out. And the sheriff's like, you know who it is? <laughs> like, I've cracked this case already, like Columbo. Um, <laughs> like, like, of course she doesn't. But she's like, well, well, I know it's rhetorical, but she's like, well, who did it? That level of brutality, it has to be personal, okay? A stranger just doesn't, I'm like, it just doesn't make any sense. And McDowell's like, murder seldom does. All right, see what you can get off those footprints. I'm going to set up our own command HQ. <laughs> That's just the police station and nothing changes. And there's three deputies and there's no <laughs> HQ. And what? He feels a blackboard then. <laughs> <laughs> this is now HQ. Like, he feels a black, I mean, blows the dust off it and the chalk from like the previous, like, I don't know, missing cherry pie from the bake sale or something because that's the only crime they've ever had here like literally that's like she's like that you realize that with comet road closed we're completely on our own and then yes mcdill kicks into this is this is why he's like this he's like good no state troopers no fbi miami this time it's payback for all those parking violations and stray cats up trees and i'll tell you another thing this sick fuck is gonna wish he never set foot in my town and I'm like, Jesus Christ, yeah, McDowell for president. McDowell for president. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Like, yeah, like I said, he is the greatest actor. We just have not been acknowledging it. It's also, it's also the dialogue he has to read, right? He's, yeah. He's literally having to say, it's like, this is payback. I also love this. That, like, he, he is excited that there's a murder, in it, two vicious murders in his town. One of someone he worked with. Like a right, deputy yeah. in his command, because this this investigation is going to make up for all the parking violations and stray cats up trees that he's had to deal with. <laughs> like this guy's fucking. It's brutal. those parking violations that drive you crazy as a <laughs> officer figure. You just they make you snap. You just you don't real I mean you don't realize it because we don't do it. We don't do it. I, I imagine. Ask, I'm quite glad ask I didn't. any ask any officer out there. Be like, what is it that just drives you up the wall? And it's those parking tickets. It's, yeah, it's the reason they drink. It's what gets to them in the middle of the night. They're never going to pay that fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I can't make it to I can't make it to court to go to this tickle ticket battle. I don't I don't think we're going to win it. <sighs> you know, you know if. Listen, I'm out there doing my job. I'm on the front line every day. But if I'm writing tickets and putting them on cars and people aren't paying them, what's the point? What's the point? What <laughs> difference am I making? Exactly. No difference. So let's 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 transition to something that at least puts a smile on my face as we exit this five minutes here, and that's the promise of tits, which technically come <laughs> in the next five minutes, but there's a promise here. Um, so we 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 transition over to. Crazy Benny's Motel, which is, by the way, the name of this motel because everyone refers to it as Crazy Benny's afterwards. And what yeah. I, what is supposed to be a glamour 
slash porn shoot. Um, there are two girls, um, one who is currently being uh, shot, which I have referred to her in another recording as not quite Daniel Harris. Like you squint your eyes, this is kind of looks a little bit like Daniel Harris. So, oh uh, yeah, are you, are you talking about the uh, the one that gets her boobs out? Courtney Palm. So she was the yeah. one from uh, Zombie Beavers, right? That's right. Yeah, my boy. Um, she's not quite Daniel Harris. If you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. No, yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah. You're right. Kind of what she looks like. Um, and we have another one who is dressed up like Mrs. Claus. If Mrs. Claus was like a streetwalker, um, and she's like. She's like fixing her top, fixing her boobs. She goes across, just rails a line of cocaine right from a mirror on a table. <laughs> just like this is classy. This is like not cliched at all. They're not stereotypes. We don't play into stereotypes in, in movies like this. This is how the no. industry works. Um, <laughs> and she turns around to Frank, who's the photographer, and she's like, So your website can only be seen in Europe? And Frank says, In Europe and Asia. I, I love this. Just like, Two generic massive land masses without yeah. any specifics. You know, like like we could just be like, yeah, like the moon. Yeah, we're huge on Jupiter. You know, yeah. <laughs> which is fucking if we got a feed out there, we could we could stream it out there. We could put it anywhere. I also love the fact that it's like your website can only be seen in Europe and Asia or that, but not America. Kinda not how the internet works unless America has banned porn. And if that's the case, then the world is over. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I don't know. I mean, that, that, that don't seem like this. I don't know. Comes from America. But anyway, he's like that. Yeah, the European Asian. She's like, awesome. I don't know why that's awesome. Um, and Frank's she like, has a bigger oh, following there. She, she clearly she prefers to, she prefers to put her product out there. <laughs> Not, ew, gross. I don't want to attract America. Not Americans. Mm, well, I can't really blame her. But yeah, and she's like, um, awesome. And then Frank's like. Oh, your presence over there, white envelope. Um, and Goldie, the assistant, is in the background. Now, Goldie, as we're saying, is walking around with a camcorder filming the photo shoot. Right. As Why is do. she filming the photo shoot? I don't know. Is that a I really... <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at these photos of tits, but I want to see how they were taken. <laughs> how did he get that angle and that lighting? What are we doing here? <laughs> Maybe it was a flash. documentary on the, <laughs> the gross motel and what happens in it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, but she's like that. Girl, you rocked it. And she's like, Merry Christmas. And she's like, yeah, have a great one, babe. And that's the <laughs> end of that. See, I'm authentically American. Like, you see, if you close your eyes and listen back to that and you get slightly turned on, if you get like a penis twitch, well, it's listening to me doing my fake American woman accent. <laughs> that is fine. It's acceptable. And I don't blame you because it happened to me while I was doing it. Um, yeah, I, told, I thought we were... I just closed my eyes now. I didn't even realize we were podcasting. Pants <laughs> are off. What happened? How much is this, how much is this phone call going to be? Um, <laughs> why, why did I spend all this time phoning one of those 0800 numbers for like a conversation about Silent Night? <laughs> like, I can do it the whole time, man. <laughs> It feels like I could be using my money better. Um, yeah, this five minutes is... Nothing happens. Nothing happens at all, apart from a lot of discovery of dead bodies. Like, the, the effects here? Cool. The severed hand looks like a severed hand. The torso looks like a fucking torso. The mangled head looks like a mangled head. They do not spare budget on this one for the effects, for the practical effects. They really lean into it in a way which kind of makes me smile. It's just surrounded by Malcolm McDowell, who is amazing in this movie, but he is—he just doesn't care. Like, yeah. he is such a dick in this movie, and I, I kind of love it. I kind of love it. Yeah, I mean, off air, kind of before we started, I was like, man, I don't know if we if I got like good segments or not, but maybe I, I did, like, <laughs> walking in disguise, like, because... After all that, like, how, how could you complain? Yeah, I mean, like, like, see if you were on the fence about this movie and then minute 25 kicked in, by the end of minute 29 and 59 seconds, you're like, this movie <laughs> fucking kicks ass, man! Yeah, this yeah, one. I mean, at least for five minutes. Yeah, for five minutes. <laughs> well, no, like, like, literally, literally 30 seconds after this, we get boobs, so. Yeah, I mean. I mean, that'll sustain us through the next at least 10, and the promise there might be more. There isn't, <laughs> there isn't any more. Um, just want to stress that there are no more boobs. Um, 
yeah, I mean, like, highlight for me is, like, is full-on McDowell just being sassy and angry, whether it's, like, you know, like dressing down his deputy saying, You're not you're not equipped to handle this kind of situation. I mean, we both know that. It's sassy, it's like so so sassy. Um and then like going on his rant about this is payback for those parking violations and stray cats of trees and I'll tell you another <laughs> thing, the sick fuck is gonna wish he never set foot in my town. For some reason I have switched into Captain Picard. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm not yeah. sure why, yeah. but make it so. Um, it's it's brilliant. It's brilliant for that thing. It is like it is the longest way to get through five minutes. Like because a minute and a half of this is the deputy walking up a flight of stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, recording stuff like uh, in the five minute segments like this, I think you really notice pacing. Oh yes. of stuff a lot more, yeah. and you're like, what the hell? All right, so I got five minutes. You know, we got two minutes of walking up some stairs, being startled. Mm-hmm. We we got, uh, you know, a minute and a half of a girl, like, fixing her top and doing <laughs> cocaine. So, like, you put all that together five minute after five minute after five minute, and you kind of think, like, what the hell are these people thinking? But you it's, really you really notice it. Yeah, um, it's given me a greater like, appreciation for Pieces. It really, really has. Pieces is the only movie thus far in this format where I'm like, every five minutes there's something... You can hang your coat on. Like there's a conversation, or there's an absurd like, like, bit of dialogue, or there's like a death. Like introduced to another red herring. Yeah, like like, like, a, like a, a kung fu instructor tries to rape <laughs> a woman. You know what I mean? Like there's there's like like it's like every five minutes there's something completely bonkers that you can talk yeah. around. And Rawhead Rex, I found that that was less so. This movie is the one where I feel the five minutes highlight a lot more of its issues than anything Mm -hmm. else. And most of them is around, like we say, it's like pacing and padding. And it's like, we need to make this movie reach an hour and 33 minutes long. So she's going to take her time to search here. And then we're going to sit with like a character talk to the grandpa. Um, And then we're going to really, really linger over this glamour shoot, which makes sense because it's an exploitation horror movie. But... It, it does it like it, it suffers this one particularly suffers huge pacing uh, pacing issues and, yeah. and like large monologues which is usually the indication that we are trying to pad for time when characters mm. go off and talk for a minute like we do whether it's either from Malcolm McStill's character at least three times in this movie the reverend or the you know the two kind of red herring Santas that get huge diatribes um, yeah they're not even like they're not they're not like exposition dumps or anything to give us background. It's just them talking. It's like treated it, treated it as a play, almost in a sense. Is kind of how I felt. Like you know, okay, we need some time here. Go go give your speech up there. Yeah, it's, go, it's go give the, your belt or something. And it's like it's kind it's of like, how okay, I feel. Chat how it's going to affect the making of movies. You know, like they, they'll become new. Like yeah, like AI will write scripts. This is what I think the scripts will sound like. Every character of like a three minute like, monologue that doesn't go anywhere. It's like the it's like the I don't know if it's a meme or just a post on the internet. It's like I made I made a you know AI watch like three thousand hours of Olive Garden commercials and this is what it came up with yeah. or whatever. It feels like that. It's like all right, I I made Malcolm McDowell watch three thousand hours of, <laughs> of police and Halloween commercials and this is what he came up with. Those Cats up trees. <laughs> I don't know why he sounded like Alex Jones, but it's a cross between Alex Jones and Christopher George. I love it. Never changed. They're putting, they're putting cats in our trees. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you did this with me. Uh, this is this has cheered me up to no end. Um, right, Jeff, you're a busy guy. You do podcasts and stuff. People out there can check out your stuff right now. Let us know the name of it and what you're up to over there. Yeah, man. Uh, we are Night of the Nerdy Laser on all the podcatchers out there, Apple, Spotify, whatever. And all the same for all the socials, Facebook, X, Twitter, whatever, Instagram. I don't want to get into it again. You know how <laughs> social media upsets me. Um, but yeah, we're out there covering all our stuff. I don't think we have any you know, true holiday stuff planned other than our list episode we're doing. But uh, yeah, go check us out. 
Nice, nice. Well, ladies and gents, there's plenty more of this sort of content coming out. Um, Jeff has already been on an episode that we've recorded. That doesn't necessarily mean it's <laughs> earlier. It's five minutes before this. That doesn't mean that that hasn't already been played or won't be played tomorrow. I don't know. The order is mixed up. All I do know is for the first 24 days of December until we close the doors for Christmas, we are putting out an episode every single day. So there will be another episode of Podcast on the Stairs coming tomorrow. So until then, I'll speak to you then.